session to those unable to join us this evening and of course to have a record of the proceedings. Now, thank you so very much for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us. I know there's a lot of things that compete for your time and your attention and your interest in this initiative and of course your interest in the ongoing vibrancy and success of your community and of the city as a whole is greatly appreciated. I do a fair bit of this kind of work and it's my personal belief that people who like yourselves who take time from your busy personal and professional lives to contribute constructively to matters of civic and community interest are always most deserving of our collective gratitude and respect. So thank you again for joining us and I look forward as I'm sure to you to a productive session. Now for those of you whom I've not yet met let me introduce myself. My name is Glenn Pache. I'm the head of a firm called GLPI and it's my pleasure to serve this evening as the independent facilitator for the meeting. So again, it might be important for you to know that I am not an employee of the city nor am I an employee of the engineering consultants who have been retained to assist with the initiative. My role is simply to facilitate the session and the only bias I bring to the meeting, if I can call it a bias, is toward achieving the best result for us all and that's what I will set out to do. Now I'll introduce a few others in a couple of minutes, but before we go any further, let's share a respectful Indigenous land acknowledgement. The city of Hamilton is situated upon the traditional territories of the Erie, Neutral, Huron-Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and Mississaugas. The land is covered by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, which was an agreement between the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabek to share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. We further acknowledge that this land is covered by the Between the Lakes Purchase 1792 between the Crown and the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. And today the city of Hamilton is home to many indigenous people from across Turtle Island, that is North America. And we recognize that we must do more to learn about the rich history of this land so that we can better understand our roles as residents, as neighbors, partners, and caretakers. Okay, so you will hear more about this later, but really simply put, the city is undertaking a study to consider infrastructure options for ensuring that Carlisle has sustainable water servicing to meet current and future community needs. And the study, again, it's a municipal class environmental assessment, you'll hear more about this later, is looking at and evaluating a range of alternatives for doing so. The work has been built on and it's been informed by previous initiatives and water conservation programs. And tonight we're focused on sharing um, a variety of information regarding what the study's all about, why it's being undertaken, the process that's been followed, the work to date, and perhaps most importantly from your perspective, including the short list of water storage locations and the evaluation of them, leading to the preliminary recommendation for the location and also the assessments of the different types of water storage facilities and the evaluation of them leading to the preliminary recommended water storage option. And of course, we'll talk about next steps and so forth. And by the way, the city has information on these and other topics, which is available on the city's website. And in fact, the website also includes various mechanisms, including a survey for sharing your views on a few topics. And you can access that at engage.hamilton.ca and then just look for this project there. So again, it's engage.hamilton.ca. Dot CA. Now, we have a number of objectives for the meeting and they are reflected in the session agenda, which I'll go through very quickly. We're obviously in the opening remarks component right now. In a moment, I'll provide a bit of information about how you can participate in tonight's online meeting and I'll cover a few housekeeping items. 
I'll then invite the city's project manager to share some words of welcome and additional context. I'll also introduce some of the other key team members that you'll likely be hearing from this evening. We'll then have an overview presentation describing again the purpose of the initiative and all of the topics and more um, that I mentioned earlier. The presentation will be posted on the project website, so don't feel like you have to write everything down or take a million screenshots but that's up to you. Feel free to take whatever notes you would like. Um, but more than that, more than just hearing the presentation, we will also be inviting you to share your questions of fact or clarification and or any comments um, which we can put to our team, to our panel of experts, and more about how we'll do that a bit later. And we'll look to address as many questions as there's time for this evening. Um, but to be respectful of your time, we'll look to wrap things up by no later than eight o'clock. And I think we'll probably be done before then, but I don't want to prejudge how things will go. And by the way, some people sent questions in advance of the meeting, and our speakers will try to address them during tonight session. And please do note, though, that the team will not be getting into um, addressing any individual property or, you know, specific questions. Those are best dealt with through other means. And at the end of our panel Q&A, as I mentioned, we'll talk about next steps and where things go from here. And the team will outline a range of opportunities outside of this session that are available for you to continue to stay engaged in the process. So simply put, Tonight is about informing everyone about the Carlisle Water Storage Facility Initiative, including its current status. It's about sharing information about the shortlist and the preliminary recommendations for both the location and the type of water storage facility and the evaluation work that's been done to arrive at these. It's about providing you with an opportunity to participate in the process by asking questions and sharing comments. And we'll, of course, speak to next steps. Now, before we go on, just a few quick words about the nature of this virtual session. So first of all, um, for those who've joined us in progress, this session is being recorded, so the content can be made available post-session to those unable to attend. You will be, as attendees, uh, muted until after the presentation. Following the presentation, there will be an opportunity to ask questions or to share your comments, and we'll be inviting you to do so orally or in written form. And of course, questions and comments can be sent to the team post-session as well. Um, should your comments or questions not be addressed live during this session, be assured that they will be considered by the city and their team um, uh, as they come in and, and they give them further consideration and, and look to produce a summary by theme and so forth post-session. For those who have chosen to dial into this meeting, and it looks like there's at least one or two of you, and by dial in, I mean potentially using a simple non-web enabled phone, in other words, an old fashioned style phone. Um, in other words, you are not using a computer or a web enabled device. You'll be able to listen to me and to the presentation, but obviously you won't be able to see it if you're just using a simple phone. However, we will be opening things up, as I mentioned, to oral questions and comments later in the meeting. So you'll have the opportunity to jump in at that point, and I'll explain how to do that a little bit later. So as an attendee, again, there are two ways you can participate. One is through the written chat, which I'll explain in a second, and you see some of that on screen right now. It's available to you throughout the meeting, and the other, we're not gonna do this now, so don't raise your hands yet, but later in the meeting, we'll invite you to raise your hands if you wanna get into the conversation orally. But again, that'll be after the presentation, not now. If you do wanna send questions during the presentation, again, you can use the written chat, uh, chat function. And to do that, if you're not familiar with Microsoft Teams, you can open the chat by clicking on that icon. It's typically found at the top of your screen. Depending on the device you're using, you may have to hover your, 
your cursor over that area to highlight it or to see it. Once you've opened it, you simply have to type your question or comment into the chat text box, and then remember to hit return or click send so that it makes its way through. Your question may be shared uh, live by me or another member of the team, so be aware of that. And I'd ask respectfully that you please keep your questions focused on the Carlisle Water Related Project. Tonight isn't about you know any and everything going on in Hamilton. We want to absolutely stay focused this evening. Now I believe we may May have some of our esteemed elected officials joining us this evening. I won't name them individually, but I'll thank them for attending and for their interest in our topic. And let me take a moment to introduce some of the other team members from both the city and the consultant firm who are assisting with the initiative. You'll likely be hearing from most, if not all of them at some point this evening, either as presenters of information or as responders to your questions. And I'll invite each of them to just as I as I say their names to you know, flip their mics on and say a quick hello so that you can put a face to the name. I'll start with the folks from the city of Hamilton. So we have first Justin, who is the city's project manager for this initiative. And Justin, I know you wanted to share a few words of welcome and a little bit of additional context on behalf of the city. Please go ahead. Thanks, Glenn, and thanks for that extensive and detailed intro. That was great. And uh, welcome everyone to the uh, the city's second PIC for the Carlisle Water Storage Environmental Assessment. Uh, like, thank you for for joining and participating in this virtual meeting. <clears throat> As Glenn said, my name is Justin Wilson, and I'm the city city's project manager for this project. I, I joined the team in early 2024, and I've been working closely with our consultant, RV Anderson, uh, to familiarize myself with the project and support the determination of the uh, recommended solution, which we'll present you today. And I won't give anything away yet. Um, we hope that you find this event insightful and that we look forward to your questions and comments at the end. Um, but that said, I'm going to turn it back to Glenn for, to continue. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Justin. And we also have Carmen Vega, who's a senior project manager with the city. Carmen, just say like a quick five second hello, if you would. Hello, welcome everybody. Well, I'm glad to have you here tonight. Great. Thank you. And we also have Carrie Vanderperk, who's the director of watershed management. Carrie, did you want to say a quick word? Sure. Thanks, Glenn. Uh, good evening, everybody. It's uh, It's nice to be here tonight. Thanks for joining us. Great, thank you. And from a firm called RV Anderson Associates that is assisting the city, we have a number of individuals. I'll just introduce four of them. We have Andrew McGregor, whom you'll hear a lot from tonight as the presenter. Um, he is the consultant team project manager. Andrew, do you want to say a quick hello? Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Great. And we have Mila Khatri, who is an environmental planner. Mila? Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And Tyler Young, who's a technical coordinator. Hi, everyone. And last but not least, Vince Grande, who is the consultant project director. Vince? Good evening, everyone. Great. And as I mentioned, we have some other staff project team members who are listening, observing. They're available as resources. So given that time is of the essence, let's begin with some core context setting information. I'll invite Andrew McGregor, again, the consultant team project manager, to share some thoughts and an overview presentation covering all of the kinds of topics I mentioned earlier. Um, Andrew may bring in some of his colleagues as well for certain parts of the material. And again, as questions or comments occur to you during the presentation, please feel free to share them through the written chat function as described earlier. And again, we'll open things up to your oral questions and comments following the presentation. So Andrew, please go ahead. And again, welcome everybody. Great to have you join us. Andrew, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Glenn. And uh, once more, thanks uh, to everybody that's uh, taken time from your busy schedules to join us this evening. I'm going to dive <clears throat> right into the presentation now, respecting everybody's time limits. Um, so I'm just going to go over the uh, briefly the presentation outline uh, that we're going to cover off tonight, the key themes. Just going to talk a little bit about the study area and objectives, uh, talk about a little bit about the, uh, the planning process that was followed, the municipal class environmental assessment process, touch on the, uh, the problem 
problem and opportunity statement, which forms the parameters or scope of the study. Uh, a little bit about the specialty studies that were completed through the project and then start to get into the, the actual meat uh, of the, the project, uh, covering off the long list of water storage locations that were considered. Uh, the short list that was developed from that long list of uh, storage locations and uh, talk a little bit about their evaluation. Uh, we'll also get into the types of water storage uh, infrastructure that we we were we considered uh, and the uh, their evaluation. And then finally talk a little bit about the uh, preliminary recommended solution that uh, that that we've developed uh, through the study and finally wrap it up with uh, the next steps as we as we move forward. So first off the uh, the study area and the key objectives, um, the study area includes the, the Carlisle rural settlement area and immediately uh, adjacent areas, which is located about uh, or east of Highway 6, about 20 kilometers northeast of downtown Hamilton. Um, basically, the study area is comprised of uh, households that are serviced by the municipal water supply, as well as households that are not currently serviced uh, by the municipal water supply, but those that may become connected to the service uh, municipal service through new connections down the road, um, and uh, currently undeveloped land parcels within the uh, the residential area. I think we've identified approximately 14 undeveloped parcels based on current planning models. Um, as noted in the uh, the blue box on the the, the slide, uh, the goal of the study is to ensure all of Carlisle will have long term sustainable water servicing to meet uh, the current and future uh, needs of the community. Um, just a word on the uh, the planning process that we followed. The project is being completed in accordance with the municipal class environmental assessment uh, planning and design process, which is undertaken uh, prior to municipal road, water, wastewater, and transit construction projects. Um, there are three key elements of the Class EA planning and design process. Uh, one is to ensure <clears throat> the consideration of all reasonable alternatives or options before arriving at a recommendation. Um, Number two, ensuring that the preferred or recommended solution will have uh, minimal impact on the surrounding natural, cultural, social, and economic environments. And finally, but uh, very importantly, uh, it involves the incorporation and consideration of input from the public and local residents such as yourselves, uh, as well as technical agencies, interest groups, and uh, as well as uh, the city's Indigenous partners. Uh, the project is classified as a Schedule B uh, Class EA study and is therefore subject to phases one and two of the municipal class environmental assessment process. Um, as shown in the, uh, the illustration, we are currently approaching the end of phase two. So here we're talking about the problem and opportunity statement. Um, this statement outlines the need and justification for the overall project and basically establishes the general parameters or scope of the study. Um, so for this project, we've identified the, uh, the, the problem or opportunity statement as, uh, as follows. Additional water storage infrastructure is required within the community of Carlisle to address the community's water capacity needs now and in the future. And through the EA study, we're going to identify and evaluate various storage types um, various storage locations and types for the required infrastructure. The, uh, as you can see, the graph to the right um, illustrates the, the current storage volume uh, or storage capabilities, um, which is approximately 1400 cubic meters per day, which is less than the total storage required to meet the current needs of the community. Uh, we've also identified the total storage under the future build out within the community, which is shown as uh, 2,685 cubic meters per day. So in a nutshell, uh, Carlisle has an existing storage deficit of uh, 689 cubic meters below provincial requirements. And in the future, by 2051, uh, additional population forecasts to be serviced by the municipal supply 
will further increase the total storage deficit to over 1,000 cubic meters below provincial water storage requirements. These requirements are calculated based on Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks design guidelines for uh, drinking water systems. And they consider a number of items, fire storage uh, based on the city's target available fire flows and based on land use, uh, maximum daily water demands, and uh, emergency storage, which is calculated based on the required fire storage and the maximum daily demand. So here we've outlined uh, the studies that were completed uh, through the environmental assessment process. Um, so uh, in prior to evaluating and identifying the, uh, the, the preliminary recommendations, we completed a stage one archaeological assessment, um, a cultural heritage assessment of the study area, as well as uh, geotechnical and hydrogeological assessments. We performed a scoped phase one environmental site assessment, a natural environmental assessment of the area, and finally a hydraulic analysis. And the results of these studies were basically uh, were, were compiled and included in our evaluation of the uh, alternative uh, solutions. So earlier in the study, we came up with a, um, a long list of eight uh, sites that could be considered to provide additional uh, water storage infrastructure, uh, and that would address the identified storage requirements. Um, area one, which was the existing elevated uh, tank site uh, located in Tower Park. Uh, area two, the William Street location, um, baseball diamonds, the area with the area four, the tennis courts, uh, area five, uh, located south of Carlisle Road, um, area six, uh, center road location, area seven, Oldenburg Road, and area eight, Carlisle Memorial Park. And these are shown in the uh, in the slide there. These um, alternatives were were screened against uh, several pass or fail criteria. Uh, to confirm their feasibility before proceeding to a, a detailed evaluation of a short list of uh, uh, two to three alternative sites. And so for the site to proceed to the detailed evaluation stage, it had to pass uh, three key criteria. Is the alternative feasible and reasonable? Um, you know, is it technically feasible? Uh, can it be constructed at a reasonable cost? Are the ecological, social, or other impacts uh, anticipated to be unreasonably high relative to the other alternatives? And does it provide a long-term solution? And that was the first uh, key criteria and sub-criteria. The other criteria was, does it address the problem and opportunity statement? Um, does it, uh, as identified earlier in the, uh, the presentation, does it support the planned growth uh, in the future to 2051? And can the alternative offer resiliency to potential future changes to regulatory climate raw water quality conditions? And finally, does the alternative meet the applicable planning policies regarding local, regional, uh, provincial planning policies? So we uh, ended up shortlisting the uh, the long list of locations down to two, and I'm not going to get into the uh, the the weeds uh, or the evaluation really for this one. I will do that with the shortlisted alternatives, but for our purposes here today, uh, we we did before we got into a detailed evaluation of the potential storage sites. We did uh, shortlist the, the locations down to the existing elevated tank site and the William Street location, also known as Area 2. So the first site to make the shortlist was uh, Tower Park, which is the existing uh, elevated tank location. This is located on uh, city property off Wood End Drive and uh, is already connected to an existing water supply system, which was a uh, positive. Uh, it can be easily accessed from uh, Acredale Drive or through a new access uh, provided through Wood End Drive. Uh, it's located in a community park 
uh, between residential homes and it can accommodate above ground or below ground water storage facilities. And those we'll get into a little bit later in the presentation. Um, it should be noted that this site could see the construction of a new facility to replace the existing tower, or we could also look at adding a second facility to provide the, uh, the required storage. The second site to be shortlisted was uh, uh, 1535 Center Road at uh, William Street or uh, area number two. Uh, this was uh, this is located on privately owned property, uh, which is one of three privately owned properties uh, that were on the uh, the long list. Um, it is not consist uh, connected to an existing water supply system. Um, however, access could be provided from the uh, from William Street, which is a, a dead end street in the area. I should also mention that um, a water main extension, if this site was chosen, a water main extension from Elder Elderberry Lane would be required, as well as potential uh, upsizing of the existing uh, water main connection, either now or sometime down the road in the future. And also, uh, this uh, site can also accommodate above ground or below ground water storage facilities. So these two sites were then uh, subject to a more uh, robust or detailed evaluation uh, which looked at uh, criteria representing the broad definition of the environment uh, per the Environmental Assessment Act. Uh, without getting uh, too much into detail, um, the, the key criteria that we considered uh, included uh, the technical, uh, social, natural, cultural heritage and uh, environments and relative construction and operational maintenance costs. Under tech, the technical criteria we considered uh, we looked at reliability of the overall system connection to the existing infrastructure and operational impacts does it uh, for, uh, serve as a long-term solution to the problem um, are there approvals required to implement the solution as well as constructability and access and overall hydraulic requirements does it provide the necessary uh, water pressure we also looked at social environment, you know, the effects on the neighboring properties, uh, also uh, construction related impacts uh, or, you know, and after construction, such as noise and dust, um, effects on uh, municipality and local businesses, indigenous partnerships, and future, future growth under the uh, city's provincial uh, official plan, or the city's official plan, sorry. Uh, just wrapping things up uh, in the criteria, we looked at the natural environment, effects on wildlife and vegetation, habitat, air quality, uh, climate change and source water protection, as well as the impacts on cultural heritage and archaeological uh, resources, or the potential for uh, impacts on those resources. And finally, but very importantly, relative cost and financial risk. Can the city afford to put in this infrastructure uh, at the selected site? Uh, as well as the uh, not only construction or capital costs, but also the um, uh, operation and maintenance costs as well. So here we show a uh, basically a summary of our uh, evaluation of the shortlisted uh, water storage locations with the uh, key criteria shown in the, uh, the column to the left. Uh, the criteria is just discussed. Uh, and the two shortlisted locations along the top row. Um, options were uh, comparatively ranked against each of the criteria, and the degree to which they addressed the criteria were shown as pies, with an empty pie representing the least preferred and a full pie being the most preferred. So from a technical standpoint, both sites were, uh, were technically viable and ranked uh, very similar. However, when compared against the uh, some other criteria, area number one, the existing tower park option uh, ended up ranking ranking ahead. From a social uh, criteria perspective or social environment perspective, um, area number one is owned by the city, uh, whereas area number two is a uh, private property that would need to be purchased. Uh, from a natural environment perspective, um, 
The William Street location is located adjacent to a wetland and within an area that's regulated by the Conservation Authority. So that was seen as a negative. Um, whereas area number one is is a park that's already uh, been been built, so very little uh, natural disturbance there. Um, the land is uh, has been previously disturbed in area one. Uh, from a cultural standpoint, it's good, which reduces potential archaeological impacts. And in terms of cost, there was a slightly lower capital construction cost for uh, for area one in comparison for uh, area two. Uh, area two would require additional infrastructure uh, with res with regards to uh, extension of the water main and potential upsizing, which increased the costs and the purchase of private property also increased the uh, the uh, the cost for number two. So just uh, again, a quick summary, uh, the recommended water storage location that was selected is area one, which is um, there. Well, there's an existing driveway access as well as uh, existing pipe network already provided on the property. It's owned by the city which is generally preferable to purchasing private property for obvious reasons uh, and reduces the costs associated with the purchase of additional property, as I just mentioned. Um, it's located on higher ground and meets, therefore meets the uh, hydraulic pressure requirements. It's in an urban area on a previously disturbed site, a park setting, uh, reducing impacts of the natural environment as opposed to uh, being situated near a wetland, which is the other site was. And uh, it also had a lower construction cost in comparison to the uh, William Street site as noted. So now that we've identified our recommended location, we uh, we, we dug into the various infrastructure types uh, for water storage, and I'm going to quickly go over these. Um, the first was uh, is an elevated tank similar to uh, what is there now. It's a storage facility supported by a by a tower at an elevation to provide storage and pressure. It uses gravity to, uh, it's gravity based to distribute water. Um, as you can see in the illustration provided, it would be approximately the same height or uh, 56 meters, I believe, and slightly wider uh, than the existing elevated tank. Uh, and this would, ass this assumes the size that we, we developed assumes a new tank to replace the existing and not one in addition to the existing tank. If that was the case, the size would be uh, considerably smaller. Um, in order to get a, a, a sense of scale, we've added in a, uh, an approximate size of a person, uh, five to six feet tall uh, in relation to the elevated tank. And that gives you uh, a rough idea of the uh, the overall size and the um, the the area shown in the the dashed line that is the size of the existing tank and so as you can see a new tank would be slightly larger um, but not uh, not not considerably at least in terms of optics another uh, infrastructure was the uh, is the, that we consider as a standpipe which is a tall tank for holding water usually small in diameter compared to the overall height. Uh, again, this uses uh, gravity to distribute water, um, so it's quite reliable from that aspect. And as you can see in the illustration, in uh, comparison to the, the dotted line, which is the ex size of the existing, uh, the standpipe would be slightly taller uh, and similar in generally similar in width to the existing elevated tank. Um, and again, as, and as I should mention, for all of these uh, alternative or options that I'm going through, the the standpipe could either uh, be added as uh, to replace the existing water storage infrastructure or be in addition to the uh, constructed in addition to the existing facility. And we'll get into that a little bit more once we get into the evaluation of the alternative uh, options, facility options. Another uh, op uh, facility type that we looked at was the in-ground reservoir which is uh, an underground compartment used to accumulate water from uh, an external water treatment unit. Um, this type of infrastructure requires pumps to distribute water, 
impacting operational uh, reliability somewhat. It is not um, gravity based. It is uh, relies on uh, electrical power. Uh, and therefore increased energy uses uh, as it's based on electricity. It requires slightly larger excavation than uh, than the uh, two previous options mentioned. And the size of the new tank or reservoir would be approximately eight and a half by 20.5 meters and would require uh, an additional pump station, approximately eight by eight uh, meters. Um, Finally, the, the, the last sort of infra type of infrastructure we considered would be an above ground reservoir as, uh, as illustrated here. Um, and this would be a, a, an above ground compartment uh, to accumulate water from a water treatment unit. Again, this also requires uh, pumps to distribute water, uh, which could have a, an impact on operational reliability. Um, Again, requiring electricity to distribute as opposed to uh, the gravity uh, facilities. Uh, requires a larger environmental footprint than the uh, than the other options considered, and the uh, the size of the new tank would be similar to the uh, to the below ground uh, reservoir, uh, and also require a pump station. So. <laughs> um, Similar to the comparative evaluation uh, we did to uh, to determine the the preferred location, we applied the the same process uh, in evaluating the uh, the various types of water storage infrastructure. So again, the top row uh, or the row at the top of the table highlights the uh, alternatives, um, alternative types of storage, either on their own or uh, you know to replace the existing elevated tank or to be constructed uh, to support the existing tank. Um, so starting with the do nothing alternative uh, on the left uh, side, uh, which we included as a baseline to evaluate the other options, um, we, we've included replacing the existing tank with a new elevated tank, um, keeping the existing tank, but adding a second elevated tank, uh, number th uh, replacing the existing tank with a new standpipe, keeping the existing tank but adding a new standpipe, um, replacing the existing tank with an in-ground reservoir or constructing an in-ground reservoir to operate along with the existing tank, and the same with the above-ground reservoir. Replace the existing tank with an above-ground reservoir or constructing an above-ground reservoir uh, to function along with the uh, or together with the existing tank. So uh, based on the comparative valuation, we identified a number of uh, key differentiators that ultimately supported the, uh, the new elevated tank to replace the existing tank as the preferred solution. Now, before I get into this a little bit more, you'll notice that the do nothing alternative has uh, a number of full pies, which would generally show that it ranked quite well. Well, one area where it did not rank well um, it was under the uh, the technical uh, criteria, and because it do, did not perform, it doesn't meet the the city's need and justification or problem and opportunity statement, as I just mentioned a little while ago. Um, it cannot be considered further. It cannot be rec. We could not recommend that. However, we did include it as it provides a, a benchmark or base baseline to evaluate the other uh, options. So just quickly, uh, from a technical standpoint, replacing the existing tank uh, with a new elevated tank ranked well, primarily in terms of uh, overall reliability, um, as it is a gravity-based system uh, and not relying on uh, a pump system, which would be required for the uh, underground and above ground reservoirs uh, to distribute water. So when the power goes, uh, water supply isn't affected. Uh, the standpipe option is also gravity based, uh, but the uh, one drawback was the, the large volume of unusable storage uh, that's presented in the standpipe increases the potential for water quality issues. Um, it was also noted that having two elevated tanks as opposed to one, which we uh, evaluated for each of the options, uh, would require 
uh, considerably more operations and and maintenance. And it was also viewed as a bit of overkill in uh, in the in the Carlisle residential area as well. Um, so the uh, the elevated tank to replace the existing elevated tank option it also ranked well in comparison to the other options from a social uh, and natural uh, environment perspective and that there's no significant increase in the overall footprint, particularly once the um, uh, existing tank is removed. And uh, it also performed well in terms of the cultural heritage uh, impacts and overall costs uh, associated with it, particularly with costs associated with the uh, the operation and maintenance. Um, one storage facility is more efficient to maintain than uh, two storage facilities, and the pump-based options require an electrical energy source uh, and additional infrastructure with, with the pump, uh, therefore increasing the uh, operation and maintenance costs down the, in the future. So just to uh, summarize the uh, the our recommendation, our preliminary recommendation regarding the, uh, the storage type or facility type. Um, it's a slightly larger elevated tank than existing, uh, not not by much. Um, so it's not going to significantly increase the uh, uh, aesthetic uh, impact on uh, surrounding properties. Uh, it has a similar operation and functionality as the existing infrastructure. Uh, with a similar sized uh, footprint, which was good with respect to the uh, the natural environment and cultural heritage, uh, potential archaeological uh, considerations. Um, and once we once it's removed, the existing infrastructure could be replaced with uh, with green space, which was also seen as a positive. And our preliminary estimates show the cost or construction or capital costs at approximately six to eight million with uh, standard uh, maintenance costs similar to the existing uh, tank setup. And this would be considerably less than the maintenance costs associated with the uh, the non gravity based options and those options that uh, that maintain the existing tank in addition to the, the new infrastructure. Uh, should note that uh, the, the the capital costs that we've identified there are very preliminary estimates and are subject to change as we get more into the uh, the detailed design uh, phase of the project. So our recommended solution is a new elevated tank to replace the existing elevated tank located uh, within Tower Park. Um, a lot of uh, Work as Glenn mentioned earlier on in the uh, in his introduction went into developing um, these recommendations. Um, the fact that it's in uh, the existing park um, is was seen as as a positive, uh, so as to minimize or reduce the the additional impacts on the uh, residents of uh, Carlisle, and the uh, the fact that it is a gravity based. Uh, facility uh, is more reliable, was seen as more reliable um, in the event of a future power outage or something like that. Uh, so that helped us uh, arrive at the uh, the preferred uh, facility type. And that pretty much uh, wraps up my portion of the, uh, the presentation. So Glenn, I will probably maybe uh, hand it back uh, to you. Uh, and the uh, the other guests uh, to answer any questions. Great. Andrew, thank you very much for the comprehensive presentation. And for those of you who've joined us in progress, you've been listening to Andrew McGregor from RV Anderson. They're the consultant team that's been working with the city on the project. My name is Glenn. I'm serving as the independent facilitator for the session. Um, we'll move to getting some of your questions and comments in just a moment. But I will reiterate in particular for those who've joined us in progress that the city's interested in getting your thoughts on a few things. 
things. And to that end, there is a survey that can be found at Engage Hamilton. Um, so please feel free to go there. I encourage you to visit and to complete the survey. And again, some people have submitted questions in advance. I'll get to a few of those in a moment. But for those of you who may have joined us in progress, really quickly, if you want to share any questions or comments in writing, please use the written chat function. And the way you do that is by clicking the chat icon at the top and doing all the stuff I mentioned earlier. But more specifically, for those who'd like to share their thoughts orally, that is to have the opportunity to speak when asking a question or sharing a comment. And if, if you've joined by computer or a tablet or a smartphone with screen capability, you can raise your hand by clicking on the raise hand button. And again, that's typically found at the top of your screen. It looks like a hand, the palm of a hand. It's got the word raise underneath it. Um, you simply have to click on that and then we'll get you into the queue. And again, you should be able to see that at the top of the screen. You may have to hover your cursor over it to highlight the icon. And at the appropriate time, again, we'll invite you to join into the conversation. Now I mentioned, and I do see that a few people have joined us using a, a simple telephone that is a non-web enabled telephone. If you want to get into the conversation, you can do so by raising your hand, but the way you do that will be by pressing star five. So again, if you want to get into the conversation and you're on a simple phone, you need to press star five. And then to unmute yourself, it's star six, but hopefully we won't have an issue with that. And I'll simply identify you by parts of your phone number because I don't know your names. Um, and then once we've done that, um, again, we'll be happy to kind of jump around anybody who's provided stuff through the chat, anybody who's raised their hand. And I invite you to feel free to join into the conversation. You're among friends tonight. This is really intended as an opportunity to share information. So please don't be shy about uh, jumping in with whatever you might want to ask or share. The one thing that you will need to do, you know, especially if you're using a laptop or a a tablet is to make sure that you have enabled your own microphone. And that's different than muting or unmuting. If in your settings, for example, you have not enabled your laptop microphone to be used, we won't be able to hear you. So keep all of that in mind. And I know that the good people of Carlisle and of the city of Hamilton generally share this next sentiment, but I will just note that of course, council staff and, and I feel very strongly about the importance of civility and respectful dialogue. So to that end, of course, there'll be no tolerance. And again, I'm not expecting this, but no tolerance for profanity or inappropriate language and so forth. And again, I'd appreciate if everybody stays on topic, given that our focus this evening is Carlisle water storage. So let's move to start to hear from some folks. Um, and I'll note in the chat that we've got a question, which I'll come to in a moment, but one that was sent even in advance of the meeting, and, and maybe I'll invite Tyler from uh, RV Anderson or RVA for short to jump in. Someone was asking Tyler, will my water supply be affected during the construction of the new tank? So is there a gap there or do you do it seamlessly? How is that done? No, um, there shouldn't be any anticipated um effect to the water supply uh the existing new proposed tank would be built while the existing tank still is operational <clears throat> once the new tank is fully commissioned and tested and is put into service then the existing tank can be removed but it should not affect anyone's water supply Okay, and that was another question, Tyler. Maybe I'll continue with that. Somebody had asked, how will the proposed water tank or water tower be constructed? And will you take the existing tower down either prior to or after the construction of the new one? I guess it must be after, but go ahead. You can respond to that. Yeah, it, exactly, Lynn. Yeah, it would be after. So the ex uh, as Andrew showed previously, the existing or the new tank is to northeast of the existing that will be built while the existing tank is still supplying water to the community um once the as i mentioned once the new tank is commissioned operational all checks and tests are complete 
it will be connected to the distribution um, water mains and then the ex existing tank will, can be removed, decommissioned and slowly removed uh, and hopefully turned into green space after. Okay, thank you. So I'll put this next city to our, or next city, our next question to our friends from the city. And in fact, there's, and there's always questions about money when we talk about infrastructure projects. But through the chat, someone has asked, how will the cost of the project be covered? Will it be through the city of Hamilton development charges? Will there be any property tax implications for the replacement tank? And in fact, somebody had also sent in advance a very similar question, which was very specific. Will Carlisle residents have to pay extra for all of this construction? So Justin or our friends from the city, please jump in on, on the financial implications of this and how it will be funded. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks, Glenn. And yeah, thanks, Stephanie, for the uh, for the question. So as as Andrew spoke to that a more refined uh, estimate of capital costs would have to be completed first. So that's kind of our next steps and we'll talk to those next steps shortly. So once those more refined cost estimates are completed, um, that will then be presented to council with uh, our recommendation that came from this EA study. So then those capital costs will be brought to council for acceptance uh, for future rate budgets. So or rate budgets or the water budget. So in short, if passed by council, the next steps for the project would be paid with the rate budget or, or water bill. So any water customers within the city of Hamilton will be paying it through their water bill. So it's not something that would be added to taxes or anything like that. Great, thank you, Justin. And again, appreciate the questions, everybody. And, and don't be shy, feel free to raise your hands if you want to get in and give voice to your own questions and comments. I know the project team welcomes that. Or again, you do have the option to send things through the chat. Um, as some have done, which is terrific. Um, and we did have some questions again that came in in advance. Maybe I'll put another one to the city. Um, somebody had asked, you said that the water tower is required for current and future capacity. Um, what additional population is being assumed for the future? Um, Justin, is that one that you and your colleagues can take on? Yeah, we can speak towards that. And I think, uh, again, Andrew did talk about the 14 undeveloped lots that uh, are currently within the rural development of Carlisle. So we are going to assume that within our future uh, projections that those 14 undeveloped lots are going to be developed upon. And that would leave, we kind of calculated that that's roughly 50 residents. Uh, the other requirements in water storage need uh, come from the transition from people from the, their private wells to the public system. Now, this is a, a very conservative approach, but we assumed that all the private uh, owners would, would switch over to the municipal well system, and that uh, represented about a thousand new residents that would join the municipal resident or the municipal uh, s storage supply that we need. Thank you. Um, so, Mila, I just want to check as our technical director. I'm not seeing any raised hands. I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Are you seeing any at this point? No. No, okay. I don't think anybody has any questions okay. to speak. Or Great. I just say. wanted to check. And again, everybody, don't be shy. If you do, we're happy to get you in. Um, so a couple of others that came in in advance, a couple of other questions, and perhaps this was asked before they knew what the recommendation was, but somebody was wondering how will the new tower affect adjacent properties? And again, that might have been before they heard Andrew explain to us that the tower is going to be you know, immediately adjacent to where the other one is. But Tyler or Andrew, do either of you want to speak to that? I know Andrew's covered it a little bit, but are you anticipating any notable impacts to adjacent properties? Tyler, Andrew, anyone? And Andrew, I can take this one. Um, <clears throat> yeah, as Andrew mentioned, um, very minimal impacts would be anticipated, especially being located uh, uh, similar location as existing one the sh uh, aesthetic or shadow may slightly change as it's slightly larger and it's moved to the northeast um, can anticipate a little bit of construction action during the construction and 
decommissioning of the existing tank, um, but all that will follow typical construction procedure, noise bylaw, contractor really responsible for dust suppression, mud control, everything along that lines. And are there certain times that people have to adhere to as well? So that people, you know, like there won't be trucks in the middle of the night or anything of that sort? No, yep, yep, that's a good point. Uh, no, they'll have to follow noise bylaws. It'll mostly be day construction and pretty much weekday construction. Um, that's typically how the city contracts work. So, yep. Okay, great. So again, everybody, we're if I don't see any questions coming in through the chat or any raised hands, we'll probably be wrapping up in the next five minutes or so. So if you're planning to ask something or share a comment, please uh, do so soon. One other question that came in in advance, and again, this might have been because you know they they weren't sure where the recommendations would end up they were wondering why the team was looking at any kinds of private property locations when there were available lands on city properties but you've now recommended one on a city property but maybe tyler you could just speak to that quickly why you were you even looking at some of those other options Or Andrew, go, maybe yeah, go I ahead, can, Andrew. Maybe I can uh, jump in on that and give give Tyler a a, a quick break here. Sure. Uh, so yeah, so the impact on private property was a uh, was a, a key criteria um, that we we looked at when evaluating the 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 long list uh, and short list of uh, site locations, and you know private property was uh it was, an, it was seen as a negative uh we wanted to avoid that if at all possible um that said uh if 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 two sites were relatively equal uh you know a, a preference to go with the city owned lands would uh would would definitely come out on top but um that that also being said, a number of private properties exhibited features that were 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 deemed to be suitable to 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 site a uh, future water storage facility. Uh, that could have been, you know, the overall size of the property, the hydraulic pressure uh, reflected at that location, soil conditions, geotechnical soil conditions, that sort of thing. Um, and so, you know. But there were also a number of issues identified with uh, city-owned properties uh, that that ultimately ruled those out as well. Uh, we looked at, you know, maybe some loss of park space, um, impact on existing and planned recreational uses uh, or recreational amenities, uh, you know, such as baseball, uh, sorry, playgrounds and that sort of thing. And in meeting with the uh, the city, several departments with the city, including the recreational departments and whatnot, we identified a number of uh, you know in some areas there were there are plans for additional amenities, you know, additional baseball diamonds, that sort of thing. So we had to balance those out as well. So while we were definitely leaning, we prefer to not purchase property, uh, private property. We we definitely uh, we we we. we leaned a bit on the side of we we would rather take city owned property but again it came down to other factors beside that as well great that's very helpful andrew thank you so i'll keep an eye out see if anybody kind of wants to get in with any final questions or comments but in the interim um let's move to talking about next steps um and just before i invite justin wilson again the city's project manager um to talk about next steps i wanted to thank all of you our participants again for joining us this evening um we really appreciate it a special thank you to those who shared questions and, and and comments and some of you had sent stuff in advance um, it's been a pleasure from my perspective facilitating the session um, i really again do appreciate you joining us so let me go to justin justin if you can give us a quick overview of what's upcoming and how people can continue to stay engaged i'll then come back to do a final check if there are any questions or comments and then we'll wrap things up go ahead please Thanks, Glenn. Yeah, we'll start with the, the next steps here that uh, Andrew's got up. Um, we're going to, so first we're going to confirm the preferred solution, which again, if you missed the entire meeting, it's a larger water tower in Tower Park uh, in consideration of feedback received by from both the public and our technical agencies. 
So based on your feedback tonight, tonight and we opened a survey, so based on the feedback from the survey, then uh, we'll confirm the preferred solution. Uh, number two, we're going to, is our next steps in the EA process, which is a project file report. And a project file report basically just summarizes everything that has been done for this project to date. And at the same time, as we're creating that project file report, we're going to work on that conceptual design, which is basically an early phase first design of our project and the class D estimate, which is that more a uh, little bit more specific estimate of how much it's going to cost. Then we will submit uh, a council report where uh, we'll decide if they and they will decide if they want to move forward uh, to detailed design and construction. So if we get approval of the recommendation uh, and budget, then we can proceed to detailed design, which uh, right now we believe that detailed design could occur in 2025 and construction potentially beginning in 2026. And again, that's all subject to council approval of the budget and the project. Can we change slides? So thanks, Andrew. So how do you get involved? Well, the presentation slides that we, the recording that we did tonight, that'll be available on Monday, April 29th on the Engage Hamilton website. And uh, Glenn's talked about uh, how to access that website and you guys had to uh, access it when you uh, logged into this, this uh, webinar. There is also a on online comment or survey form that uh, we appreciate if you could uh, write any comments in there and that's going to be available to May 13th. So if you can uh, multitask, do it right now. Um, there's also frequently asked questions uh, on that Engage Hamilton web page. So if there's questions that come up that you still have, maybe we've uh, addressed them within those frequently asked questions. So, so check that out. Um, and as I said, in our last thing that we're going to be doing a project file report, which is a summary of all the various uh, components of this project um, and that a notice will be sent to the community of Carlisle when that is completed for comment as well. And I, I always like to say that remember that here's our contact information. So if you have any questions, you can contact me. There's my email. You can contact Andrew at RV Anderson. Um, our contact information is also on that Engage Hamilton website, so don't feel feel free to to reach out to us. Uh, there's no silly questions. We're we're here to to answer any of them. So thank you, and uh, and I'm going to pass it back to Glenn. Thank you, everybody. Great, thanks, Justin. So final call, last call. I'm just checking if there are any raised hands. I'm not seeing any. I'm not seeing anything else in the chat. Oh, hold on. Something I think just came through the chat. Let me check it. Oh, just a thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. We appreciate the thank you for sharing your thanks and we appreciate you joining us. OK, so let me draw things to a close um, a little bit sooner than expected, but that's OK. Again, I want to thank everyone for participating. I know this project invites a lot of interest. Thank you again for attending. Um, if you haven't already, just to echo what Justin said, do visit the city's Engage Hamilton page. Um, for the initiative and you'll have the opportunity to complete the survey. I'll now formally adjourn the session. So thank you to the various technical and other personnel who made it possible. Thank you again for participating. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Take care, stay safe and goodbye for now everyone. All the best. <laughs>